Hello, my name is Ferdinand Schlatt, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to my presentation, Mining Health-Related Cause-Effect Statements with High Precision at Large Scale. I am a PhD student at the Martin Luther Universität Halle-Wittenberg, and this work was done in collaboration with these other four lovely gentlemen, which in part come from other universities, but we all mostly work together in the so-called Webis group. Now, why is mining health-related cause-effect information from the web important at all? Well, first of all, there just is a lot of this information on the web. As an example from Medline Plus, where uh, it's a website for consumers to gain trustworthy information, where the information about what kind of conditions can cause which diseases. So, for example, some ear disorders can result in hearing disorders and deafness. But there is also cases where maybe someone will want to sell you something, such as uh, magnesium supplements. So here in this case, magnesium deficiency may be a major cause of fatal cardiac arrhythmia, which is supposed to persuade you to buy these supplements. But there's also other sources, such as horoscopes, where the weak strength of Mars causes blood infections and high or low blood pressure, and other not-so-nice conditions. So in general, there just is a lot of this information, and it may be important to ask sociological questions, such as how trustworthy is this information online and what kind of sources give this information. And with these questions, this information has to be mined first. But there's also practical applications, for example, uh, by giving direct answers in a search engine where you could pose the query cause of headaches and directly receive the answer that stress and emotional distress and infections may be possible causes. And this is currently possible in here, the Bing, Microsoft Bing search engine, but it's only possible for a subset of queries. So extracting these statements could be useful for practical purposes as well. Now, the general extraction of causal relations has seen a lot of interest from the research community in the last few years. For example, Heindorf et al. have created the CauseNet, which is a graph of 11 million causal relations extracted from the sentences of the ClueWeb 12 web crawl and presented this at the Sikkim 2020 conference. And here they extracted the phrase pairs from these sentences. Uh, here in this example, magnesium deficiency is the cause phrase and cardiac arrhythmia, the effect phrase. And in the second example sentence, cardiac arrhythmia now is the cause phrase and death, the effect phrase. And using these causal phrase pairs, they constructed a graph for these four example sentences. The graph down below looks something like this, where it's also possible to extract the cause and then multiple effects. Uh, as seen down here, tsunami can cause death and destruction. Now, this works quite well, but it's currently or was currently not possible to extract the health related part of this graph, which was our task in this work. In particular, we now want to remove the instances that are not health related and just keep the phrases which do have some kind of relation to health. So magnesium deficiency, cardiac arrhythmia and death and ignore such non-health related relations such as tsunami causing destruction. Assessing the health relatedness of a phrase is closely related to the task of word sense disambiguation. However, in this case, we're not trying to detect the sense of a word, but we're really trying to detect the domain of a sense of a word. And this can be quite difficult sometimes. For example, here, cancer can take the sense or a health-related sense by meaning uh, a tumor. Here, her death was a result of cancer, but it can also take a non-health-related sense. Here in the example, Virgo, Cancer, and Mercury are our astrological concepts or particular cancer here being the stellar constellation. And in this case, then not being health-related. To assess the health relatedness of phrases, we used so-called contrastive term mode scores. These were originally defined to extract domain vocabularies, so make a vocabulary of judicial terms or also medical terms. And we've generalized them a bit 
to work for all kinds of phrases, but uh, in principle, they work by comparing the term frequencies of one domain corpus and a contrastive out-of-domain corpus. Here, for an example, we have the term actor, which can be found close or a, a bit more than 5,000 times in the health-related PubMed corpus, which is a corpus of uh, abstracts, medical abstracts and uh, can be found a lot more frequently in the contrastive Wikipedia corpus. However, the health-related terms of carcinoma, diagnosis, and study are found a lot more frequently. Then there are, or contrastive termwood scores uh, in general, use these termwood frequencies uh, in a variety of ways and combine them. And we in particular used three different contrastive termwood scores in this work, contrastive weight, term domain specificity and discriminative weight, and to gain an intuition about how they score different words, we can look at their score distributions, where here at the bottom from left to right, we have the contrastive weight term domain specificity, and on the x-axis, the score they gave particular words. Some example words are highlighted here, and uh, in particular, the uh, non-health related word actor, and the stop word the is scored less health related by each of the scores. Brown and orange is always more toward the left, toward the lower scored side of the distributions. Where in contrast, carcinoma, diagnosis, and study again are scored more to the right. There are some differences between the scores. In particular, the, the word wor uh, ward uh, receives different scores. As an example, in the contrastive weight, it receives a high score, but the term domain specificity gives it a particularly low score. This is because the term domain specificity focuses on, as the name suggests, the specificity of a term. So the word ward does occur in the health-related context, but it's not exclusive to the health-related context, which is why the domain specificity does not give it a high health-relatedness. We evaluate the termwood scores against two manually labeled subset of the previously introduced COSNET. In particularly, we labeled two subsets, the a high precision subset and a full, and a subset of 1000 labels from the full COSNET. And we used from both 800 samples to train the termwood scores and 200 then to evaluate their effectiveness to uh, have some baselines to compare against. We used two different approaches. On the one hand, we used different medical entity linkers, uh, CTEX, Metamap, QuickQ, MLS, and SciSpacy. And uh, we then consider a phrase to be health-related if one of these medical entity linkers is able to detect a medical entity within the phrase. We also fine-tune different BERT models BaseBird, CyBird, and PubMed, also using the labeled training data sets from up here and then evaluating them on the test data sets. This table gives an overview of the main results or a subset of the main results. Uh, we tried two different optimization criteria. On the left here in the table, we optimized for precision, meaning that we try to achieve at least 9% precision with each of the approaches and then report the recall that is achieved with at least 90% precision. And on the right, we optimize for the Matthews correlation coefficient. This is a measure related to the F1 score, but it also includes true negatives, making it a bit more comparable between two data sets. What are our main takeaways? Well, first of all, the medical entity linkers perform significantly worse and are significantly less effective in assessing the health relatedness of phrases. This is signified by the dagger. And in particular, they are a lot less effective when trying to maximize precision. Here, specifically on the high precision subset of the COSNET, they were not even able to reach the 90% precision threshold required and on the full COSNET, they did re receive, uh, achieve the 90% required precision, but 
uh, only to the detriment of a large portion of recall. The next main takeaway is that the BERT-based approaches do perform the best. They perform the best in all scenarios, be it high precision or focusing on high precision or on Matthew's correlation coefficient and across all data sets. However, the Termwood scores are a close second, achieving the same uh, recall at high precision on the high precision subset and falling close behind in both Matthew's correlation coefficient uh, optimizing scenarios. However, they do fall a bit further behind in the full phrase data set trying to optimize for precision, but the result was not statistically significant. It is important to note, however, that the Termwood scores are a lot faster than the BERT-based approaches, classifying the test data sets 108 times faster. Thereby, they are uh, the only approach that is really applicable at large scale and, and can be applied to web scale data. Speaking of web scale data, we then applied our Termwood scores to the full Cosnet and extracted the Vebus Medical Cosnet 2022. We extracted two subsets from the precision oriented subset of the Cosnet, uh, achieving in both instances about 1.3 million sentences at around 90% precision and 90% recall. When applying our Termwood scores to the full Cosnet, we, in a high precision scenario, achieved an estimated 100% precision at 74% recall and were able to gather 5.6 million sentences. On in a Matthews correlation coefficient optimized scenario, we got 7.8 million sentences, achieving estimated precision of 78% and 90% recall. It is, however, important to note that the sentences and statements in this resource are only claimed, meaning that there will be statements for which evidence can be found, such as stress causing insomnia, but also statements for which this or finding ev evidence is more difficult. Uh, for example, incorrect placement of Jupiter causing diabetes. To summarize, our contributions are that we generalized a Termwood-based method to effectively and efficiently assess the health relatedness of phrases, and these perform as good or at least not significantly worse than BERT in all scenarios, and are substantially faster than BERT, making them, the, in our evaluation, the only uh, approach which can be applied at web scale. We then used this Termwood approach to create and release the Vebus Medical Cosnet 2022, a resource of over 7.8 million health-related cause-effect sentences, and this is hopefully useful for not only health sociological analyses, but may also be able uh, or support health-related web search and other applications. Thank you for your attention.